Well, hi friends, good to see you again. Wednesday the 9th, welcome to our devotional time together. Today is the uh, last of our look at the hope of the prophets. So remember, we're going through the Advent wreath, the hope of the prophets, the faith lived by Mary and Joseph, the joy of the shepherds, and peace told through the angels. So today is the last day as we look at the prophetic messages of the Messiah. And I, I hope uh, indeed that you are beginning to find hope in this season of Advent. Because I think of all the seasons, and of course Easter is going to bring us hope, uh, but there's no Easter without the birth of Christ. The birth of Christ really signifies the beginning of God's kingdom. It, it, it's a starting point. All the prophets had spoken about Jesus. Uh, all of Israel was prepared for Jesus, the Messiah. It had been 400 years uh, since the last prophet wrote there had been no prophet to Israel in that whole time, which was very unusual. And so in God's time, Jesus was born. And that in and of itself is hopeful. We're going to be now in the Psalms and Psalm 72. Remember the Psalms were written by King David a man that was entitled, entitled, uh, was given the title, a man after God's own heart. But remember, David was also very much captured by sin. Uh, he had a, an inappropriate, adulterous relationship with Bathsheba. He sent her husband to the front lines to be killed. Uh, <laughs> a, a very tainted past. Uh, most scholars believe that uh, David wrote most of the Psalms, if not all of them, uh, after that experience and after then King Saul, uh, who David would replace, of course, was trying to kill David. And so the Psalms are just very real and, and they kind of go over, go over or through the gamut of human emotions and feelings. In today's text, uh, Psalm 72 and verse 10, we catch up with David who is making a a prophetic utterance of the Messiah. So prophecy often has two applications. A an application for now, I should say, for when it was first written, and then a further application. And prophecy really means uh, to speak the truth. It's not just foretelling uh, or forth telling. It, 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 it also, it really means uh, the truth. This is, this is the truth of what is happening and will happen. So let me start at verse 8, but then we'll focus on verse 10 in Psalm 72. Um, and, and this is of, uh, these, are, these are words recorded in this psalm of uh, Solomon. That was the high priest in the time of David. So may he rule from sea to sea and from river to river to the ends of the earth. And this is a messianic text. This is talking about this uh, Messiah. So the Messiah would rule. Uh, may the desert tribes bow before him, the Messiah, and his enemies lick the dust. And then here's verse 10. May the kings of Tarshish and of distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him gifts. May all kings bow down to him, and all nations serve him. 
You can read the rest of Psalm uh, 72 uh, as it refers to the Messiah. Uh, but wh what, who do you think David is prophesying about here? Uh, or better said, David is recording uh, the, the high priest um, Solomon. Did any of you guess the three kings? <laughs> I hope so, because this indeed is a prophetic utterance of the kings of Persia, not of Israel, uh, and these cities are listed here, who would come from afar. And what, what do they do? They bring tribute from distant shores to the Messiah. They present gifts to him. Isn't this talking about uh, the wise men that we consider at Christmas? And if you remember, uh, not to shatter any of your expectations or uh, understandings of Christmas, but if you remember, uh, these kings made their, their pilgrimage uh, at least a year after Jesus was born. They arrived uh, in Bethlehem at least a year, maybe more like a year and a half. Some, some scholars say even two, just because of the distance traveled and in uh, the preparations for such a journey and such. So this is still part of the infancy narrative that's captured in the Gospels. And again, it's another messianic prophecy. And what do messianic prophecies do for us? They give us hope in assuring us that Jesus is who he said he was and did what is recorded of him. And there's also a future fulfillment. Jesus is already king of God's kingdom. We talked about that yesterday. He already is king who sits at the right hand of God. But, or I should say, and the ruler of this world is still king of this world. The ruler of this world, the king of this world, has not yet been deposed by King Jesus. But, and here's the hope, <laughs> Here, here's what we remember at Advent, the hope of the prophets, Jesus, our King, will depose easily. The work is already done. Satan was conquered on the cross and in the resurrection. His future is sealed and assured. This King, King Jesus, in the second advent will come again and rule all kings for all time. Isn't that hopeful? <laughs> In today's day and age where we have authorities, kings, rulers, elected officials that are really hard to stomach sometimes. <laughs> and I mean all of them. <laughs> Isn't it nice to know that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is coming again and soon. That gives me hope. Let's pray. Lord God, we're grateful for the prophets, the hope they professed in the Messiah, and how then Jesus fulfilled those uh, prophetic utterances and God, we know uh, that Jesus, you came as king to establish your kingdom and you will come again. And we also know uh, to rule, to reign, to depose the ruler, the king of this world once and for all. And so Lord, help us to live into that hope this Advent in Jesus' name, amen. It's been great to see you all today. Tomorrow we're going to 
move into the study of our, the topic of our second candle in the Advent wreath, and that is the faith that was lived uh, by Mary and Joseph, and especially on their pilgrimage to Bethlehem. Until then, have a great day. Live in God's presence and in the hope of his return. God bless you.